Uh, very good morning to you. I'm Malcolm Grahamwood and welcome to Core Finance uh, for today's CEO interview. Uh, I'm very lucky that uh, today's uh, guest is, is James Menzies, who is CEO of uh, Coro Energy. Welcome back, James. Thank you, Malcolm. It's great to see you again. Thank you. Um, we've, uh, we've had a lot going on. Um, before we talk about the deal that you've been running around with this week, yeah. uh, a bit of an overview for the people who don't know too much about Coro would be very helpful. Yeah, yeah certainly. Well, uh, Coro is a, you know, it's obviously a, a small cap EMP, uh, aim listed. Uh, small production business in Italy. So we have uh, producing assets in the, um, in the Po Valley and the Marquet. Uh, it's not a big business. It's doing about one and a half to two million uh, standing cubic feet a day. So it's, it's relatively small. Generates um, positive um, cash flow, which helps. Uh, also a very good operating platform for our efforts into Southeast Asia. So really the, the aim of the company is to grow a business in, in Southeast Asia itself rather than Italy. And uh, to that end, um, some money was raised about a year ago, a little bit of um, uh, running around money, which we've used um, to, to start building that portfolio. And our first deal <coughs> was uh, a deal into East Java. And I think the last time I was talking to you, actually, we were mm. talking about that, uh, the deal on the Bulu field yep. uh, out there, which is a gas field. Um, it's going to be marketed into, or it's being marketed at the moment, into East, the East Java gas market. We've also got um, a little bit of uh, an interest in Malaysia. So Petronas, the state company, have, um, are doing some work with us. They've given us this uh, very high quality 3D in, in a, in a, on a block in deep water and are asking our technical opinion of, um, of the acreage. Uh, and we're going to be talking to them about um, potentially taking that to a, a production sharing contract. Uh, but uh, we had just moved uh, with this deal into the Western Tuna Basin. Mm -hmm. um, so it's our, our third uh, piece of business, if you like, in Southeast Asia. And what we're intending to do is grow a portfolio of opportunities in the region where we have discovered resources <coughs> with, with some step-out exploration upside uh, that we can commercialize, develop, bring on stream, uh, and hopefully pick up protection acreage around that to form, form a hub. And, and I think the model in Southeast Asia for small EMP is to form a portfolio of these hubs. That's, right. that's where we want to get to. <coughs> Excellent. Um, you've been around town this week promoting. Mm. You've had a lot of meetings, a lot of um, presentations and so on. Why don't you get into some detail about what you've, the acquisition you've made, what you've made. Uh, is it production? I know there's a lot to talk about exploration. Yeah. Um, yeah, talk us through it. Certainly, yeah. It's, a, it's an asset in the Western Tuna Basin, so it's in about 90 metres of water. Uh, it's a production sharing contract. It's actually a gross split uh, PSE, so it's one of the new contracts in Indonesia. Okay. Uh, so it's been migrated from an old one to a new one, uh, which has a little bit more favourable economic terms given the, the status of development of this, uh, this asset. But it's actually, uh, interestingly, it's a gas field which has been known about for a long, long time. Uh, and little birdie tells me that you used to work on this when they were looking, <laughs> yes. for, oil, when they were looking for oil in this field. Is that right? That's right. Yeah, <laughs> I, I uh, have worked this block as a, as a young geophysicist back in the day. Um, and in fact, was working on one of the wells that, uh, that goes through this field. Um, back in the 90s, in, um, when I worked in Jakarta, uh, we were looking for oil in the west of Tuna, yeah. which, which is a very prolific, mature basin. Yeah. I mean, today it's something like 40 billion barrels of uh, oil and gas equivalent have been um, found and, and uh, produced in that basin. So it's, yeah. you know, it's very mature. Uh, it's a good address. And, uh, you know, as I say, people have been looking um, for, for oil and gas out there. This is uh, a gas field which is actually very shallow. So it's a biogenic gas accumulation. It's only 400 meters um, depth. Yeah. Um, but it, aerially, it's enormous. It's about the size of Greater London. So it's about right. 350 square kilometres. <laughs> um, but we have four it's wells. <laughs> it's a challenge. Four wells have penetrated this uh, gas accumulation. So, you know, we know it's the, there. And one of the wells, the last well to be drilled, Mako South, was actually targeted to, to explore whether this could be exploited commercially. Right. Whereas the older wells were looking for things deeper down. Yeah. And what they found in that well was that the... They call the reservoir, so we know the reservoir is extremely good quality. Yeah. At 400 meters depth, you'd expect it to be, so it's got very good yeah, power yeah. Um We know the gas content, and uh, it's good quality gas, no CO2, yeah. it's, it's biogenic <coughs> gas, it's dry, as yeah. you'd expect. Uh, it flow tested, so it's flowed yeah. at 10.8 million scuffs, very good. And we know the, um, the pressure regime, so, so we're confident this can be uh, exploited as a commercial resource. 
It's about 276 BCF. That's a Gaffney Klein number. It's yeah. not, uh, not ours, although our numbers are very similar to that. Uh, so it's been independently certified. Uh, and it is 16 kilometers from the West Natuna transport system, which is right. a pipeline that goes to Singapore. Right. It's we'll come back point. to the infrastructure in a minute because I wanted to talk about yeah. that in a bit more detail. So you've got, so it's not producing yet. No. Nope. But it's, it's quite close to, would you it's, say? It's four uh, wells. No, it needs, it's at the point of development. So the right, plan of yeah. development sits with the authorities right now. Um, and it's got the other interesting aspect to this, I think, for Coro shareholders is that. Uh, we've got exploration potential above and below the exist the field as it sits today, right. and this deal where we're we're paying the vendors effectively a little bit of cash and some coro shares, but the vast majority of the funds yeah. are going in the ground, and those are the deals yeah. I really like. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to we're going to be paying for some exploration drilling and appraisal drilling on the field itself this summer. When would you expect production next year or year after? Oh no, it'll be probably twenty twenty one. I would okay. I would assume yeah. so. Uh, a fair way off, but we've got a lot of value to accrete between now and then through uh, a couple of ways. First of all, commercialising what's there. So that yeah. means getting the POD approved and a gas sales agreement. We can come back yeah. to that. Yeah. Uh, secondly, by proving up more resource. Now the exploration potential. Um, sits both above and below the field itself. And it being so aerially massive, we would like to appraise different parts of that field. Uh, and we have one prospect that sits beneath the field, which is very close to some wells I was drilling back in the 90s, right. that has seismic amplitude responses, which right. tell you yeah. there's something going on down here. And so we view that as being quite low risk exploration. And we would have to drill through the field to go and see it. So we're yeah. basically yeah. deepening an yeah. appraisal yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other um, exciting prospect we've got is at the southern end of the field where we have shallow, um, bright amplitudes that, yeah. that light up above the, the main reservoir. Yeah. So even to go and appraise the field in the south of the block, we would have to drill through these prospects. So in fact, the, the, the cost of, of exploring those is, is zero compared to uh, appraising the field. Yeah. So uh, the, the, the potential of those two things, though, could double the resource base here. I was going to say, I've heard, I've, I've heard, <laughs> I've heard you bandy this around. Yes. This could double, or probably more by the sound yeah, of it. Yeah, it does it, a little bit more, indeed. Uh, the, 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 the way you're talking about it. Um, so that puts it into, into firmly very, very strong value, yeah. value terms. Highly value accretive. I mean, we're, in terms of the deal itself, um, we're paying just shy of $15 million dollars for our 15% equity in this. Yeah. It values, actually values the, 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 the asset at $91.5 million as the headline number. Yeah. Um, given the, the external view of resources here, we're paying about 34 cents an MMBTU. And Singapore Gas um, you know, sells for somewhere between yeah. 8 and 11, we'd yeah. expect. Uh, so very, very promising on that front. Yeah. Now, talk me through the financing of this deal. Yeah. Because particularly when it came out on day one, um, the, the message boards and, the, and Twitter and so on was a, was a light with the fact that you're, it's not a straight equity deal. Yeah. Um, you've got uh, a euro bond. Mm -hmm. uh, one of your major shareholders is buying half the euro bond and yeah. underwriting the rest. Yeah, a new investor for the other. Yeah. yeah, so why don't you talk me through the whole, yeah, whole bank certainly. shoot? Certainly. Well, the, I mean, first of all, the, the idea is to find a way that we could get this deal done, secure financing for the drilling. This is the important yeah. thing for the group that we're working with here is they need drilling funds to go out yeah. drilling this summer. And, and we want to, to do that too. Um, we needed to secure the financing up front. So, so going to the equity market to do a deal subject to raising equity at the share price that Coro sits at today with the state mm. of the equity market, in our view, was a highly risky uh, yeah. thing to do and probably wouldn't have got the deal done. Yeah. If you, uh, and if you leave yourself in that position, you can't move. Obviously, yeah, we are trying to build a portfolio here. So we found a way to raise, raise some finance, to, yeah. to guarantee funding for the drilling, and actually give our investors the opportunity to, to, to enjoy the upside from that without having to put their hand in their pocket. So uh, the, the euro bond is a straight euro bond, as you say. Yeah. It's, a three yeah. year, uh, it's got a three year life to it. Um, we can call it if we, we wish to at our, at our, yeah, yeah. At our uh, behest. They have warrants attached to the bond uh, that are exercisable at 4p a share. So yeah. here we are at 2.3, 2.4, yeah. um, you've got a lot of headroom before you get to 4p. Yeah. And of course, those being called would repay the euro bond anyway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So we, we think this is a way for us to secure the drilling. Our shareholders can enjoy the upside. 
we can get some drilling activity. We also have the safety net of the field. Yeah. Let's, if yeah. everything goes wrong, we still have the field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so this is the sort of deal like that really appeals to me. Yeah. Now the blend, the word blended is coming yeah. to this, and and I understand that when you you do all the sums and the fees and bits and pieces, yeah. you get a blended price of 12.3% or something, is 12, that about right? 12, 12 and a bit, yeah. I mean, yeah. The, just quickly, the way that comes about is there's the, the bonds are issued at a discount, so there's a 15% discount um, in, the, in the issue, a headline price, if you like, and there's an origination fee of about 7 and then there's a 5% coupon. Right. And over a three-year period, if you add all that up, it's about 12.35% yeah. per annum. Um, which, you know, compared to the price of equity today, yeah. you know, you might say it's cheap. Well, <laughs> um, I've, cert I've certainly seen people paying a lot more than that, yeah, so, yes. so I don't think you need to worry too much about that. Just um, before I finish on, on, on that one, uh, when you mentioned just now about, well, I asked about production and so on, um, and you said 2021, the, work, the workflow program yep. and so on, I mean, you, you expect to start that yeah, now. Uh, now. Uh, in fact, and and, and when, when would you sort of spud the or drill bit going to yeah. ground? Yeah, so uh, I'm on my way to Jakarta. We've got a tech com at the end of this month. We'll be ordering long lead items. Um, the, the location of this block is about two to three days tow from Singapore. And if you fly into Singapore, you will see a bunch of jack-up rigs um, stacked there. So we can, we can find uh, uh, the rig and drilling equipment's not an issue. We're not far. Our mob D mob cost is relatively light, yeah. uh, is what I'm driving at, uh, which is good news. So we'll be looking to be drilling here late August, probably September, is, the, is what we'd intend to do. Yeah. And it'd be a two-well yeah. program. Okay. So we'll definitely be drilling the, the deeper prospect and appraising the northern end of the field and probably appraising the southern end of the field We'll have a bit of a technical discussion. I mean, it's very shallow. Is yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Is it 30 days or 60 days or something? Oh, well, it wouldn't even be that long. No, 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 no it'll be quick. It'll be yeah. quick. Um, and, of course, we're, we're catering, we're planning on a full testing suite yeah. and as much geological information as we can possibly get our hands on. Yeah. Um, and I mean, it, it, it's not a wildcat, so you would no. expect quite a lot of testing. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah it's and, not a wildcat. And quite a lot to do. Um, okay, so... Um, we talked about the. You mentioned the infrastructure and Singapore and yeah. the pipeline and everything else. Um, you sort of mentioned eight to eleven dollars. Yeah, um, just so why don't you talk us through the infrastructure? Sure. I mean, the there's a obviously it's a mature basin. There is, as you'd expect, a well developed um, pipeline network uh, from these fields, and it's it's quite a way. But it, the pipeline runs to Singapore and then it goes on to Sumatra actually. But um, We'll be looking to put gas into that pipeline. It has ullage. You know, yep, it's, it's, yep. it's been going for 20 years, this yeah, pipeline yeah. system. Uh, owned by the Indonesian government, um, managed by Conoco on behalf of uh, the operators in the basin. And uh, there's space for, for new gas. Um, these guys have got a heads of agreement signed with a Singaporean gas buyer already. Right. Yeah. Um, so I think we'll get the POD approved, and then we'll be looking to firm up that into a full-blown gas sales G agreement. G so, yeah. Once you have that, that yeah. um, you know, that's a key piece of uh, paper yeah. that, you know, I think at that point you're ready to, to go on your field development plan proper. Yeah. So you'd be looking for a full-blown full field development at that, uh, then. We would be wanting to tap into that pipeline uh, either at the, the nearest uh, point of entry, which is a neighbouring producing field yeah. about 16 kilometres away, or we could take it in on our um, under our own steam into yeah. uh, into an open space on the pipeline itself. And and I mean there is significant demand for yeah, gas yeah, in, yeah, that, yeah. in that part of the world. It's quite interesting because on the one hand I hear in the marketplace people saying that the majors, the bigger companies, so on, are actually moving out of the area. And we mentioned this in our last mm. conversation. And on the other hand, I see a fear doing the Santos deal, and then a fear being brought up themselves. And every time I speak to Premier, they tell me that the Southeast Asia stuff is doing really well. Yeah. You know, I, it's a slightly difficult lot, isn't it? What, people are moving out, yet yeah, you guys are all moving in. Yeah, well, I think there's a natural rotation between the super major, for yeah. whom this is a big mature province and clearly something that they're, they're looking to run as for cash or dispose of, yeah. and, um, and the, the bigger IOCs. So we've seen OMV move into Malaysia, for example, in a big deal, $500 million deal. Yeah. Um, just in, in, the, in the last month or two. Um, you know, Repsol are trying to increase their position in Malaysia as well. Uh, and the independents, um, particularly yeah. the local and smaller ones, this is the time for them to come in and, and uh, do deals to, to pick up some of these assets. Yeah. So it's a natural evolution, I think. Good stuff. Um, we need to talk about the, the rest of the assets. You, yeah. you briefly mentioned them in your overview uh, because obviously you have uh, assets in Italy mm. um, which are giving you some money, but you've also got the Bulu uh, 
PSC, which you bought before. Uh, and of course, you've got this deal with Petronas, yeah. where you're so you're looking over data. Yeah. And that was the block that was re sort of re returned by yeah. Murphy and um, BHP had BHP. it. Yeah, yeah so that's right. It was talk us through the whole bank sheet of, okay. of the rest of the portfolio. Well, let me, let me start with Malaysia, just as we <laughs> as we mentioned it. I mean, it's a um, you know, I, I kind of I like to say this is off strategy for us because it is a yeah. it is a deep water rank wildcat exploration block, and and that's not really our game. Yeah, I'm not dismissing it out of hand because actually it does look interesting, but you know I don't really want to put Coro's funds into something yeah. like that. So I think if we were going to 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 do something here, we'd be looking to bring in a partner to cover yeah. Coro costs. It is uh, a typical, you know, it's deep water, but it has some very large structures. It's got um, gas effects all over it, very high quality data. Um, so, you know, rather than give it back, we, we'd like to do something with it. So I think we'll look to try and put some work program together to, to, to take this yeah. block and see if we can bring in a partner. Yeah. But more importantly, M Malaysia has assets that are strategically on yeah. message for yeah. us. <laughs> and that's what we, we would love to, yeah. to, to get into Malaysia for. In East Java, uh, there we're looking at the gas is being marketed to the East Java gas market, and you know we're looking at a number of different buyers for the gas. I think the the, the gas buyer has now been anointed, right, yeah. uh, so we'll be looking for the gas sales agreement on that. We've got presidential elections in Indonesia in April. Right. Around the time of elections, things kind of slow down and 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 you know move around a bit, go yeah. go a bit syrupy. So I think once the elections are done, I expect to see that signed. Yeah. Um, but that will be at a healthy price, um, which, and then you've got the POD and the gas sales agreement approved. Yeah. Um, I think that one will be ready to go. Uh, and then Doyoung, as I say, uh, similarly the POD and the gas sales yeah. and, and drilling about to happen. In Italy, um, maybe a few words on that. Yes, yeah, please do, yeah, because um, in fact there's been a lot of talk about Italy one way or the other in the last few days yes, as well. So. Yes, and, and uh, you know, we've seen a bill passed in, in the parliament to suspend exploration um, activity and exploration applications for the next 18 months. Uh, and in actual fact, it, that doesn't really affect us because we're in the process of, of giving back all our exploration acreage. Yeah. Um, the, the thing that interests us in Italy is our, our production, exploitation concessions, yeah. which are on stream and we don't need approvals to drill yeah. side tracks uh, you know, or, or bring on new production there, so, which is you know, part of the plan. So uh, we don't. This doesn't really have any effect for us, but it does mean. You know, I think everyone looks at Italy now, uh, thinking, you know, how would you build a business organically? It looks very tough. Yeah. I think there'll probably, if anything, be now more opportunities to consolidate yeah. what's there already, uh, which would be a sensible route forward. Yeah. Um, so when you first came in, uh, you said that you, know, you, you had a lot of things to do. Yeah. You've, you've now done three deals effectively really I would, I would say I mean uh, but this one is particularly the most important one uh, I mean have you got the uh, the time and the energy and the financial capacity to, to keep looking for, for m a stuff in in Southeast Asia yeah I mean we're in the portfolio construction business really and um, I think there are some elements that we'd like to add to that at the moment we see the, the deal flow is there uh, obviously, the people, um, you know, is a is a is a issue that's easily solvable. Um, capital is always scarce, and and that's been a problem in Southeast Asia. Uh, it's starting to get a little bit better. We're seeing some public market money come back in, some industrial yeah. money come back in, uh, but it's still been a bit slow. But uh, um, but there's still a lot to do, and uh, and certainly, you know, we intend to to prosecute that route for sure. Yeah. It's quite odd, really, given they've got so much. Uh, you know, gas demand on their own doorstep mm -hmm. that they that they don't go and sort of say let's make this into our North Sea or whatever yeah. it happens to be that uh, they're letting the, the foreign companies come in and do yeah, that. Yeah, I, I think I think that's partly a historic thing in that um, local capital is very happy um, servicing you know, the service sector in Southeast Asia. Yeah. They're very comfortable with uh, services, rigs, you know, boats, yeah. um, but actual EMP is novel to them. Yeah, and that tends to be the the role of the foreigner. Uh, yeah. And they haven't really. There has been not that much uh, nurtured of a of a of a local champion. Yeah. In fact, yeah. Medco. You mentioned the Medco yeah. deal yeah. earlier. 
they are probably the exam exemplar of, a, of an Indonesian, you know, who's looking to be the regional champion. Yeah. Um, and actually, to be but honest... But even they were premier. Yes. Before. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I think, I think yeah. actually more of that in Southeast Asia would be a really yeah. good thing, because they, yeah. they, they, they have capital yeah. in the region, but it doesn't yeah. want to go to EMP, it wants to go to services. Like <laughs> so yeah. maybe that will change. Um, the bad news is that uh, our time is almost up. It's amazing how quickly 20 minutes goes <laughs> when you're having fun. Um, but as always at the end, and um, particularly now that you're putting several deals together and sort of bedding things down, I'd like to know what you think or what you'd like to see uh, in terms of what Coro would look like in sort of 12 to 18 months' time. Yeah. Oh, well, I'd, I'd tell you the, the two things I'd love for Coro more than anything else. Um, I think we would like some production in this in this portfolio. You know, yeah. I think we've got some interesting exploration. Yeah, uh, we have some really good quality uh, grown up um, gas yeah. assets to to exploit. Uh, we're probably missing some production. There is some of that around. It's not that easy to get hold of the right assets, but that would really, you know, and then that is a that is a. And maybe I'm being overly, overly hopeful there. But you're still looking. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't stop you looking. I think the other thing I'd really like to see is um, is more in Malaysia. You know, I, I yeah. do view Malaysia as being the prize. And I think for Coro, we, it would be great for this company. It would, yeah. you know, we get on so well with Petronas. I think, you know, they like us. I think they're, they're trying to show, give us every assistance they can. And this Block yeah. 2A is kind of evidence of yeah. that. Yeah. And, and I think the nature of the assets suit a company like this as well. So right, that's what good. I'd love to see. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, thanks very much for coming in. Thank nice you. to see. You. Uh, today's CEO interview has been with uh, James Menzies, who's the CEO of Coro Energy. Uh, thank you very much for, for joining us. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye now.